Although academia would like you to believe they possess a detailed, complete history regarding the construction of Easter Island, just like any other seemingly impossible site found around the world, any explanation as to how these supposedly documented events were indeed undertaken remains absent. We recently postulated that much of the ancient ruin that is Easter Island and perhaps the most impressive features still to be found upon the island are more than likely buried beneath past landslides once caused by rapid deforestation. And, as predicted, with this realized and archaeological excavations commenced, we soon knew just how deep this ancient sediment actually is, and as such, the controversial discoveries began to surface. Not only are there ancient Moai statues, stretching into the hundreds of tons of weight dotting the island, but how these were moved into position is knowledge lost to the chasm of history. However, although academia would like you to believe that these tasks were completed within the last thousand years, the evidence of a past advanced civilization actually having been responsible is all over the island. After shallow excavations were undertaken around Anahu, one of the many ancient ceremonial platforms, polygonal masonry, uncannily similar to that found within Giza, Peru, Bolivia, and indeed all other as yet unexplained sites around the world, was indeed unearthed. An additional piece of evidence we feel may one day help to eventually unravel the mystery of not only Easter Island, but many other ancient sites around the world, is in its past title. Once known as the Navel of the World, it is interestingly one of many. A number of other ancient sites, thanks to our own more modern ancestors, retain their ancient titles as navels. Were these ancient civilizations somehow able to tap into a mysterious energy grid that can be found crisscrossing our Earth? It is undeniable that many of the most ancient sites found all over the planet can be found located upon purported ancient energy lines. Were these placements a mere coincidence? Were they placed there for another reason? Or were they indeed tapping into an energy field which allowed them to shift such weights. Chipito Chenua is an intriguing artifact that can be found upon the island. With such an extremely well-preserved, untouched history found upon the island, Chipito Chenua is still remembered as an artifact once used by ancient elders, used to summon something called mana, which interestingly translates as earth energy. These elders then inexplicably use this energy to float multi-ton statues across the coastline, placing them in their final resting places. Are all these connections, artifacts, and historical accounts mere coincidence? Or are we truly on to something? Only time will tell. Easter Island, undoubtedly one of our favorite ancient places, not only does its existence resonate with the mission of our channel, but its volumes of compelling stories, legends, and still existing ruins makes it one of the most intriguing places to explore anywhere on Earth. Not only are there legends of a magical Earth force known as Mana, having once been responsible for the as yet unexplained movement and placement of the gigantic Maui statues that can be found littering the coastlines, but there were also endless tales of astonishing bravery, often attached to feats of survival. It is believed that over its long history, several catastrophic population crashes have befallen the islanders. One in particular, according to the geology of the island, took place a very long time ago. Once covered in thick forests, dense trees fed by the fertile lands at some point within antiquity, these forests experienced extreme and rapid deforestation. It is currently not known what happened to the wood acquired, but it is possible that just like the enormous statues, and indeed the inhabitants at the time, were buried under landslides, which occurred after the forests were felled. The island of Easter is, in fact, 
an entire buried treasure. The inhabitants at the time of this deforestation, and quite possibly their entire existence, was once buried under enormous landslides. These remains, possibly preserved under several meters of earth, still found upon the island. What's compelling regarding the buried remains is that they could indeed be those of the people who were once responsible for the movement of the statues. A fragment of a civilization that we have long stated is not a mere few thousand years old, but very possibly a pre-Ice Age, world-going, highly advanced civilization once capable of moving stones we are yet to explain the placements of. Could there quite possibly be perfectly preserved, highly advanced ancient ruins buried under many meters of earth all over the extremely remote Easter Islands? Furthermore, could there actually be existing evidence, or possibly, the lost technology responsible for moving such stones still within the reach of being publicly exposed and out of the reach of conspiratorial powers who would, if capable of such a task, excavate such sites and hide away these controversial features? What's buried on Easter Island? Could it ironically turn out to actually be a metaphysical Easter egg? A valuable jewel in the crown of alternative antiquarian researchers the world over? Easter Island is undoubtedly an incredible place and one which still has much to show the world regarding our past. It's an amazing thought that a tiny place thousands of miles out within the ocean could hold an ancient secret capable of affecting all of us. Easter Island. The more I learn about this magical place, the more amazing it seems to become. I have become consumed by its history. Not only is it many thousands of kilometers from the coast of its nearest inhabited neighbor, but it still possesses features and characteristics that although largely overlooked by mainstream academia, could unlock certain aspects of our forgotten past. Not only is there confirmed reports of the island, once being inhabited by giants, but there exists concrete links to an ancient network of structures, which had an as yet unknown function. The island has been visited by numerous talented explorers and historians throughout the modern era, detailing many ancient anomalies upon the island which cannot be explained. The official view is that Easter Island was discovered accidentally by Polynesian migrants in the 4th century AD. Their descendants, living in isolation and having nothing better to do, decided to carve giant statues and build huge platforms. This version of events however, conveniently avoids any explanation as to how they built the Moai. What I have personally discovered, is a compelling link to the same civilization who built the pyramids, the ancient sites in Peru, and others which span the earth. Researchers have been connecting characteristics of Easter Island with the pyramids of Giza, and numerous other sites for many years, subsequently discovering the suppressed, yet very real, ancient pyramid, which rests upon one of Easter Island's neighboring rocks. Tahir Dal, a Norwegian explorer actually investigated this mysterious pyramid. His belief which he gained from many years of study, was that the Incas actually learned their craft of masonry from their predecessors in Tubanaku. Excavations of the earth-covered pyramidal mound in Tubanaku have shown it to be a terraced pyramid from long before the age of the Incas. It is faced with accurately hewn and artistically jointed blocks, just as on Easter Island's neighbor. Local legend stated that a powerful supernatural being named the Ark, traveled about the Pacific prying up whole islands with a gigantic lever and tossing them into the sea. After destroying many islands, he came to the coast of Easter Island, then a much larger land than it is today. Eventually he reached a place on the island where the rocks were so sturdy that his lever broke. And this is what remains of the island today. What is interesting about this story is that it tells of the island once being much larger, a hypothesis strongly supported by numerous areas of study, along with the oldest archaeological remnants upon the island. William Routledge, a British explorer, discovered traces of a track of great antiquity, finally finished, which runs round what is now left of the island. It is known as Ara Mahiva, Ara meaning road, and Mahiva being the name of the spiritual deity believed to have made it. Much of the road which remains is now just a continuous furrow which runs along the northern and western coasts. Routledge said at the time regarding the find, quote, This silent witness to a forgotten past is one of the most mysterious and impressive things on the island, end quote. 
The ancient road is also mentioned in a Rongorongo tablet known as a Pai. Rongorongo is the written language of the Easter Islanders, even Orthodox researchers have admitted that the language is a genuine enigma. Rongorongo now survives only as markings on 25 pieces of wood scattered around the world's museums. The tablet contained the following, when the island was first created and became known to our forefathers, the land was crossed with roads beautifully paved with flat stones. Heki was the builder of these roads, and it was he who sat in the place of honor in the middle where the roads branched in every direction. The roads were cunningly contrived to represent the plan of the web of the grey and black pointed spider, and no man could discover the beginning or end thereof. Charles Love has examined about 20 kilometers of the 40 kilometers of roads built from Rano Raraku, focusing on the three main roadways plus several branch roads. Describing his findings as startling. The island's statues, roads, walls and platforms, were all clearly built with a forgotten knowledge, and were built for a purpose. According to Egyptian legend the Sphinx contained portals, a topic I have covered previously, according to its function two Sphinx would be on separate horizons from one another. With Sphinxes and a very ancient pyramid being discovered in Zinda, I suspected this may have been the location of the other site, however, Giza, Zinda and Easter Island lay on a direct line from one another, a line of travel, which wraps around to the exact other side of the earth. One of the former names for Easter Island is the navel of the world. The megalithic Inca capital in Peru was called Cuzco also meaning navel. The same name was also applied in ancient times to many other sacred places for some reason. It is also similar phonetically and semantically to the Egyptian Mort Ra, meaning essentially the eye of the sun. Francis Mazier, who conducted archaeological excavations on the island in 1963, was told by a native elder that the first men to live on the island were the survivors of the world's first race. They were yellow, very big, with long arms, huge ears although their lobes were not stretched, they had pure yellow hair and their bodies were hairless and shining. They did not possess fire. This race apparently once existed on two other Polynesian islands. And they came by boat from a land that lies behind America. He also noted that, most of the island's statues are 5.5 to 7 meters tall, and very few are shorter than 3 meters. About 55 statues are made of other stone, red scoria, basalt, or trachyte. The largest statue ever made, El Gigante, still lies unfinished at Rano Raraku Quarry. It was a monstrous 21.6 meters long, and weighed up to 270 tons. Carvers completed the front and sides, but was never liberated from the rock. John McMillan believed the statues expressed haughty scorn and imperious will, it is the expression of victorious warriors and empire makers, though the arrogant and resolute look is given to the faces of all the statues, it is never the same on two, everyone looks as if it had been intended to be an individual portrait. Was Easter Island intended to be a temple celebrating death and the path of the sun, that during its original construction was haunted due to some form of cataclysm? It would appear according to the information gathered thus far that a pre-Incan civilization originally constructed a temple upon this once larger Polynesian island. That subsequently fell into the sea. The remnants of this forgotten people would continue their lives upon the island, passing on a form of this forgotten knowledge which built the pyramids, constructed the statues, and was responsible for many other ancient sites across the world. The figures are as hard as bone below the outer surface, and so is the exterior surface where it has not been subjected to the rain. At one point, an attempt was made to decapitate the statue, it ended in complete failure. Using a hammer and chisel, a member of Heidel's team took half an hour to chip off a bit of rock smaller than the size of a fist in the quarry. At some point in time, it would appear, this last remaining group of people, who possessed this lost knowledge, was finally extinguished from history. It seems the island's subsequent inhabitants attempted their feat, as when modern explorers made it to the island, the quarry was littered with thousands of crude pickaxes, known as toki, made of dense basalt. Heyerdahl discovered these tools to be useless at quarrying the hard stone. The islanders had a legend that the statues were moved to the platforms and raised upright by the use of man, a form of supernatural mind power. Either the god Makimaki, or priests or chiefs commanded them to walk or to float through the air, the use was made of a finely crafted stone sphere, 75 centimeters in diameter, called Tipitokara, interestingly it translates as the golden navel, or the navel of light. Their manner would then make the statues walk out of the quarry and across the island in a clockwise spiral. 
Francis Mazier was one of the few scholars to take the legends about manor seriously. Quote, what if certain men at a certain period were able to make use of electromagnetic or anti-gravitational forces? On the side of the volcano there is something wonderfully strange. Here statues were brought down over the top of dozens of others, without leaving any marks. Yet the movement of 10 or 20 tons is by no means child's play. The natives said that everything died on Easter Island when Mana left it, while at the same time I see the amazing evidence of a quite extraordinary past. It may be that parapsychology will find a sympathetic vibration in this island with its perturbed, confusing magnetism. End quote. Some, who, the ceremonial platforms, are quite small, but others, the older platforms are remarkable pieces of engineering, 150 meters or more long, and up to 7 meters in height. Some required the moving of 300 to 500 ton stones. While the Tar High complex comprised of three structures requiring the movement of 23,000 cubic meters of rock and earth, weighing an estimated 2,000 tons. Moai statues are also exclusive to the Rapanui people, and the techniques used to move them and carve them is clearly something they learnt from the original group of inhabitants. I now strongly believe that upon and around the island there are numerous undiscovered giant skeletons of a forgotten race, along with many ancient ruins which have been lost to history. With a surviving language unlike anywhere on earth, advanced building techniques buried under past events. The connection of other ancient sites across the world to Easter Island, becomes undeniable. What amazing secrets lay in this once forgotten place just waiting to be discovered, only time will tell.